pastiera napolitana is one of my favorite Italian sweets to eat around Easter time. I first encountered it in Naples, uh, where, which is where it's from. And there you have this scent of oranges, cinnamon and vanilla, which just wafts through the alleyways. And one can imagine the nuns in these convents rolling out the pastry and picking fresh oranges from their courtyard. Then when I lived in Rome, there was an all hours pasticceria on the corner of my street that baked pastiera around 4 a.m. when I was just coming home from a night of dancing and I would pop in and buy a huge slice and then fall into bed excited at the idea of waking up to make my cafe and eat this fragrant treat in the morning. There is a short crust pastry on the outside and a rustic rough cheesecake texture inside made of ricotta and wheat berries softened in milk which is called grano cotto in Italian. There's citrus zest and orange blossom water. So it's like a citrus tart meets a rice pudding meets a ricotta cheesecake. Heaven. It is said that the rather sour Queen Maria Teresa of Austria was known as la regina che non ride mai, the queen who never laughs. Uh, yet even she couldn't help breaking into a smile upon tasting pastiera, apparently. At which point the king said... Per far sorridere mia moglie ci voleva la passiera. Ora dovrò aspettare la prossima Pasqua per vederla sorridere di nuovo. I'm mixing flour with sugar and a pinch of salt and some orange zest. And then adding butter, working it all in with my fingertips and then adding egg yolks. This gets covered and rests in the fridge for half an hour. Okay, so this is your pastiera, your version <laughs> I, of the pastiera. I, I don't know if actually where I'm going to put this segment, so I don't know if they've already seen the pastiera be made. Maybe not, but this is oh. Pastiera Napolitana. But eat, eat, eat. Let's try it. Guido's, Guido's been in Florence, so he's just trying for the first time. Mm. I hope you are enjoying your Easter weekend and these first weeks of spring. Uh, spring. Mm. Is it good? Does it taste like spring? Mm. Yeah, fresh and sweet and hopeful. Mm -hmm. I have, like, when I think of Easter, I have these lovely uh, memories of decorating a, a hat for the Easter parade with my mother. And, uh, and going with my sister into the garden and collecting little leaves and things to make homemade nests and baskets for our Easter eggs. And, uh, and, and lots of people have been asking me, what does Italy do for Easter? For sure, we think about eating. Yeah. <laughs> and it was, it was a colleague that she's from south of Italy yeah. this week. Yeah. And she was saying, how can you live without pastiera at Pasqua? Because the Tuscan is not so common to yeah. have pastiera yeah. and south of Italy it's like the yeah. uh, pudding the cake for, for Easter so yeah, yeah. but then Delicious. there's also La Colomba there's also um, Luogo di Pasqua and then uh, and then there are lots of um, people were going last Sunday for Palm Sunday and taking it was really lovely instead of palms Guido took olive branches to be blessed uh, in, the, in at the mass on Sunday and then a lot of people take uh, boiled eggs to be blessed as well, which then... On you... Easter. On Easter, too. Yeah. To get blessed. And then you eat them yeah. on Easter Sunday. Yeah. yeah. Because the egg is like the... It's a symbol, obviously, of... of rebirth. Of rebirth. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, of life. There's a way of saying Natale con i tuoi, Pasqua con i tuoi. Which means, yeah, there's a saying in Italy which means you spend spend Christmas with your family and Easter with whoever you want. Uh, so, yeah, but we're also spending it with family, which will be yeah. lovely. We're having Guido's uh, parents are coming uh, for lunch tomorrow, and uh, then I'm going to see my sister later on. So. Uh, also just spring. Spring feels so lovely. It's like, it always feels to me like you're, you, there's the possibility of cultivating better habits and a better version of you and because it's like a fresh, clean page and, and just literally you're unencumbered because when you go outside you're, you're not taking coats and stockings and all these things just 
weighing you down, you know, with heaviness. It's like the other day when we went out and got the twigs for the to make jump like, you know, the little the little basket. We just went out and I had no socks, no stockings, bare legs, bare arms, the sunshine on your skin and and, and then I looked and see uh, this field full of vibrant yellow wildflowers and, and it just, you feel light, no? You just, you feel like you're shedding, literally and figuratively, that heaviness of, of winter and, and all the, the coats and things that you have to, no? Yeah, you feel life. Life, yeah. yeah, yeah. And Guido's come to the end of his Lent, almost. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of <laughs> Lent of, of not, not cakes, obviously, and not pudding, not sweets, but mm. alcohol. Yeah, so for, for Lent, Guido uh, gave up alcohol and I gave up sugar. And, uh, and so, I, I, what's the, the, the meaning of Lent? Is to, to sacrifice something so that you can then. Uh, In theory, it's taking away something to give space for meditation and self and self. Um, how do you say? Self. Uh, examination. Examination. Yeah. I, wouldn't, yeah. I wouldn't say analysis, but yeah. In, in, reflection, in, in reflection, an introspection, and yeah. stuff like that. So it's a good mm, metaphor because you are coming out from winter, that everything is sort of seems dead. Yeah. And then this period before Easter, you can try and, and work on yourself to be ready to restart in a in a in a fresh way and pass from that status of sort of death to a status of rebirth, rebirth and yeah. life and yeah. the meaning of this, the word means passaggio, so a passage. I think Italy's changed a lot because I was reading that I think in 2022 they said only one in five Italians actually goes to mass um, regularly. Yeah, it's a very um, large estimation, I would say much less. Yeah, well, I think probably if they did some survey, it's like how often do you go to mass, and probably people said, "Oh, I go <laughs> quite quite more more than they would like to actually admit." But uh, but yeah, it's it's, uh, it's something that's changing because you think of Italy as quite a Catholic country, uh, and yet uh, I guess that things have changed quite a bit. The priest came the other day um, to bless. The house, which is, is that something he does, they, they do around Easter time as well, is it to do with Easter? I don't know, honestly. Because I feel like last year he also came around this time. Probably in spring. Yeah, so the priest is so lovely, he just comes, we hear the bell and the priest comes in and he came into the kitchen actually and, 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 and blessed the house and, and uh, Guido is one of the few younger people that attends Mass, but it's not so common to have young Italians uh, going to mass, unless of course it's for Easter and and, uh, and Christmas. Christmas which and weddings. Yeah, and weddings. Yeah. The important thing I believe is having that moment, it doesn't matter if it's through one religion or another, but mm. that passage that is symbolized in, in Easter of going from something dead to something alive, renovation, rebirth, mm. are, are very important concepts also in your life because you have low moments in life you can have low moments when you think everything is the end or everything is dead or there's no possibility and and you know that yeah you will go through that suffering but there is the, the possibility and the hope of a rebirth in, in something new and actually that suffering will be useful to this rebirth mm -hmm. because it's like in nature, for a new plant to grow, you need the old one to die. Mm -hmm. So this can happen also in yourself. Your old you dies with suffering, unfortunately, usually, mm -hmm. and you re you're reborn in something new mm -hmm. that is still yourself, but gone through that process of change and, yeah, I would say rebirth. I didn't have any other words to use in English, but that's the... Yeah, yeah. Anyway, regardless of what you're doing uh, for Easter, whether you celebrate it or you don't, or whether you're just celebrating the new season, uh, and you want to try and maybe realign yourself for this, uh, for this new season of spring, uh, perhaps better help may be of interest to you. They are kindly sponsoring this part of the video, and they contacted me to offer you guys 10% off your first month of using their service. 
They are an online therapy service. They have over 30,000 licensed therapists and uh, they make it all very easy. If you've never done therapy before, you, all you do is fill out a questionnaire within usually 48 hours. They match you with someone. If you don't feel comfortable with that therapist, it's no problem at no extra cost. They can just change over the person. You don't even have to give a reason. You just uh, say that you would like to try someone different and they make that work for you. And uh, yeah, if you want to check that out, you can go to the link. I'll put it in the description box. It's just betterhelp.com forward slash Kylie. And uh, yeah, it's something that you know, I won't get Guido to get started on how he feels about therapy because he's such a, a huge <laughs> advocate that we will be here. Yeah, otherwise it seems like I'm minutes. not pretending. So <laughs> the first thing to do to get better is whatever your goal is, is starting from somewhere. And yeah. And if one hasn't got the possibility of having a therapist close by or whatever, this service could be a help. It's, it's, you just do it from home, but... Whatever you're going through, uh, even if you, you don't uh, choose to, to check out their help or whatever, I just want to say that please remember that most of the things that we go through are like seasons and they will change whether you're feeling great now or whether you're feeling really troubled um, it's all going to it's all going to fluctuate and that's something that is when i've felt in times of of struggle that's given me a lot of comfort because i've, I've realized that okay it's it's going to change whether i like it or not and so you just have to ride it through and and wait for the next season and prepare this pastiera. Did you give the recipe? No, I didn't give the recipe. Why not? You know why? Actually, don't be selfish. No, <laughs> it's no, <Easter>. because, no. <laughs> be generous. Yeah. No, because I didn't give the recipe because it's not mine, and I only give recipes when they're actually okay. mine. But I used a, a, a combination of two different recipes that I found online, and to be honest, I would change this. I'm going to make one more version of this before you know i don't like to share the recipes until it's absolutely foolproof so but the i'm, fact I'm is, not an expert on the topic but yeah. on this type of cake but it was delicious oh you so liked it really yeah. yeah well yeah i but i think honestly if you put in pastiera napolitana you will find a million recipes uh in even in english so yeah it's, it's yeah. very light cake it's delicious <laughs> <laughs> now back to creating the filling for pastiera in the past i've made this with the textured grano cotto wheat and i loved it but i decided to blend a little under half of it because i read that it gives a slightly creamier texture if you're not in italy you could use arborio rice instead of wheat berries uh, which i think would be lovely because it would just still have that chewiness uh, like like rice pudding i added the blended wheat and the textured wheat butter milk orange zest sugar lemon zest i heat this for about 15 minutes over a low heat then leave it to cool meanwhile i drain the ricotta to remove any excess liquid then mix in the sugar and six egg yolks one at a time Then some cinnamon, vanilla extract. Traditionally one uses orange blossom water, but I'm just using orange juice. And mix this well.
whisk the six leftover egg whites and then combine the cooled wheat mixture with the ricotta mixture and then the egg whites. Pasiero is also famous for having the candied citrus fruits. Uh, I'm using um, candied orange in this case. This recipe makes two pasiera pies, which is handy because at Easter it's great to have a homemade sweet to gift family or friends. I'm making one medium-sized one, one small one, and a third very small. The pastiera is recognizable because of the lattice strips of pastry on top. Of course, all great Italian sweets come from the convents of Italy. And as I was rolling out this dough, I was thinking about how I read that it was rumored that the pastry of the pastiera made by the nuns at the San Gregorio Armeno convent in Naples was so perfectly smooth because they would take it into their garden courtyard, lay it on the stone and then massage it with their bottoms until it was perfectly rolled out. This seems to me more like a cheeky fantasy of those outside the convent rather than anything based on historical fact. Needless to say, I shall not be adopting that traditional method of rolling my pastry dough uh, on this occasion. One of the legends of Pasiera is that the people of Naples were enchanted by the singing of the mermaid Partenope and brought her seven gifts of their city. La farina, simbolo di ricchezza, la ricotta, simbolo di abbondanza, le uova, che richiamano la fertilità, il grano cotto nel latte, a simboleggiare la fusione di regno animale e vegetale, i fiori d'arancio, profumo della terra campana, le spezie, omaggio di tutti i popoli, e lo zucchero, per celebrare la dolcezza del canto della sirena. The mermaid carried all these gifts from the people of Naples to the gods and they combined them all to make la pastiera.
saw my Christmas wreath making video, you'll know that this is not something I have learned how to do. I'm just intuitively guessing where and how to make this work. At a certain point, I'm not going up any higher. I'm just adding extra reinforcement around the outside. And it's obviously not, uh, it's obviously very messy, but I kind of like it. It feels like something a bird would have created. <laughs> Or perhaps a bird would be a lot neater, but uh, it's always remarkable to me that you can start with just a couple of twigs and then suddenly you have uh, a shape, a shape that is sometimes even useful and just feels so lovely and, and primitive and you kind of imagine how tribal natives must, uh, must have over the years evolved with uh, with creating tools and using using nature. What do you think? <laughs> ah, ha, ha. I just got one big long piece and put it around and it's fairly well wedged in and now I guess I'll just take these and try and twist them around. I just love how forgiving this whole process is. Like you you kind of make it up as you go and if one bit breaks it doesn't matter if another bit gets dislodged it's like you just find a new hole for it and this one this one will be good oh look at that perfect oh my gosh it's so satisfying <laughs> i just love it I'm so excited. It looks like a, I mean, not a proper basket, but it, it, it will do. It will do for Easter, won't it? Gianfranco, of course, still isn't eating or hasn't eaten sugar, so uh, we figure why introduce him to it now when he doesn't, he's not asking for it, he doesn't need it. And he just loves looking at the Easter eggs that I've been filming with you know these easter eggs i've just been putting out on the table he he just gets such a thrill out of out of looking at their pretty paper so for the moment if he doesn't know what they are what's inside i think we we needn't tell him and then <laughs> have it be a, a a battle to sort of get him to eat other things right now he eats only wonderfully nutritious things, so we may as well enjoy that while it lasts, I guess. Uh. Oh my gosh, this is such a satisfying experience and I really didn't think it would happen so quickly. Look at that, that's a proper handle. <laughs> Well, if I can do this without breaking it, it would be amazing. Yes. Yes. J'aimerais tellement être tranquilo, tranquilo, avec toi pour toujours, avec toi pour toujours, tranquilo, tranquilo, pour toujours. Can you give one to Nono? Can you give one to Nono, Mori? Yeah?
you for watching. I wish you all a very happy Easter, Buona Pasqua, and I will see you alla prossima. Pour toujours.